My name is McKenna Johnson, and I will be discussing Amanda Dobbins' article for Vulture titled, Yes, Gone Girl Has a Woman Problem. Gillian Flynn's 2012 novel Gone Girl is a suspenseful, dual-perspective thriller about Amy Dunn, a woman who fakes her disappearance and frames her ungrateful cheating husband as a way of punishment. In 2014, David Fincher released his popular film adaptation of the story, which, although stays very faithful to the novel, includes a few key differences that affect its tone and message. Contrary to what the article's title seems to portray, Amanda Dobbins does not believe that the story of Gone Girl is misogynistic, which is something Gillian Flynn has been repeatedly accused of since the book's release. Instead, Amanda Dobbins argues that the film Gone Girl fails to capture the strongest and most interesting aspects of Amy Dunn's character as written in the original novel. Dobbins begins by acknowledging the accusations that Flynn has received because of her characterization of Gone Girl's wicked female protagonist. She references an interview from The Guardian in which Flynn asserts that writing a truly evil female villain should not make her a misogynist. In that interview, Flynn says, To me, that puts a very, very small window on what feminism is. It's also the ability to have women who are bad characters. The one thing that really frustrates me is this idea that women are innately good. Dobbins agrees with Flynn. Women can be villains too. But she declares that there is a different and more significant issue with women in this film. Although Gillian Flynn herself worked with the director David Fincher to write the screenplay, they ultimately fail to truly capture the essence of Amy's complicated character. Dobbins writes, Somehow, it took a story about the worst impulses of a straight woman and turned it into a feature-length film about a dopey man. That is not misogyny, exactly, but it is a problem. Amy is undeniably the driving force of Gone Girl. She's a complex and troubled woman, but also ridiculously perceptive, charming, and manipulative. Unfortunately, the film puts more energy into fleshing out Nick's side of the story. Even though Amy is the most compelling aspect of Gone Girl, the film strips her down, leaving us with a lifeless and unreasonably sadistic woman with seemingly no motivation for the trouble she causes. Dobbins goes on to describe these major differences between film Amy and novel Amy. She writes, At least half of the book, and real talk, all the memorable parts, is devoted to her fiery, alarmingly lucid ramblings about men and marriage and disappointment. She is ultimately a sociopathic, morally indefensible character, but she, in her own words, is present to the very last page. That does not happen in the movie. It would be difficult to properly and aesthetically create a fully fleshed out, dual perspective film that faithfully depicts both Nick and Amy's true motivations. The book excels with this format, but it simply does not translate on the screen. And this is where Dobbins declares the film loses its intrigue. Dobbins writes, The big reveal of Gone Girl, Amy's a faker, forces David Fincher and Flynn to tell the story from Nick's perspective and timeline. This means that the movie loses most of Amy's scary mind. It loses her propulsive anger. It loses subjectivity. They try and fail to capture Amy's essence in the movie, but simply can't portray all of it. Instead, it puts a spotlight on Nick, the less interesting protagonist, and begs us to care about him. In the film, we are watching the events of Amy's disappearance unfold through Nick's eyes. We are uncovering the twists and turns at the same time he does, so of course we as the audience will feel this unconscious connection to him and his confusion. But from the novel's halfway point onward, we are never uncertain as to what Amy's disturbing thoughts and motivations are. She is unhinged and vengeful. She is what keeps the story propelling forward. When we are denied her inner musings, we lose a significant amount of the story and almost all of Amy's fascinating character. As Amanda Dobbins wraps up her review, she returns to Gillian Flynn's Guardian interview, in which she declares, I don't write psycho bitches. The psycho bitch is just crazy, she has no motive, and so she's a dismissible person because of her psycho bitchiness. Dobbins asserts that this is the problem with movie Amy. She is stripped of her motivation, or at least her self-justification, by the necessities of filmmaking. This is not woman-hating, it's a failure of adaptation. This is the woman problem that Dobbins is referencing in the title of her article. Amy Dunn is an endlessly fascinating female villain who has compelling motives and a complex personality. 
the film simply fails in portraying this truly evil woman. I agreed heavily with this review and was glad to find someone who was able to articulate why exactly it was that I found the film to fall so flat in comparison to the novel. Both versions had their own unique strengths, but overall the novel easily surpasses the film in terms of character development, especially in Amy's case. Amanda Dobbins wonderfully analyzed the film and provided great insight into the complexities of Amy and how her characterization was lost in the film adaptation. Thank you so much for listening.